As for me in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. so that they may return to the right path. Give all for the faith they profess are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. 
The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is in agony, in labor pains until now. Not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has been granted, not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, what even he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables because they look but do not see and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, you shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted. And I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. The evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a short time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches chokes the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know how it is out there, but it's hot up here. I was saying to our server on the way out, I said, well, hell is hotter and the coffee is cold. Today's Gospel presents us with a very interesting parable to think about. We have the sower going out to sow the seed, which is, of course, as Jesus explains, the word of God, the graces of God, the proclamation of the word of God, the beautiful teachings of Christ Jesus. It's spread everywhere. So God doesn't hold anything back in the gift of his grace, in the gift of the proclamation of the truth. He gives it all. He holds back nothing for himself or of himself. God wants to be known by us. God wants to be received by us. God wants to be loved by us. God doesn't hold anything back. Because he wants intimacy with us, he opens up the fullness of himself and he tells us everything about himself. This is the sowing of the seed. This is the proclamation of the gospel, the proclamation of the love of Christ, the gifting of his grace, the sacraments. It's spread out across. Where it falls and how we respond is up to us, right? What kind of ground are we is today's question. 
Now, how many of us are really good soil? Uh, put the hand down, right? <laughs> I mean, honestly, right? Don't we have original sin at work in us? And then we have those other sins always creeping around in our hearts of pride and envy and jealousy and lust and sloth and greed and wrath and all those other little evil children of the seven deadly sins. So how many of us are really and truly the good soil that's able to produce such a harvest? If anything, they're few and far between, and not the majority, right? As we look through and we look at the different soils, we realize each and every one of us at different stages of our lives are this soil. So you look at that first one the Lord talks about here. He speaks about the seed that falls, where are we now, on the path. A lot of you like to garden. Have you ever tried to make a garden on a footpath? You can't, why? People will trample it. The ground is too hard. It won't receive the seed. And oftentimes our hearts are like that. When life tramples our hearts and we go through such difficult, painful things in life, our hearts become hardened like a footpath. And it's very hard to receive the word of God when we have so much suffering in our lives. If you ever have met people who've been rejected and went through terrible things in their lives, it's hard for them to believe that God could actually love them. And so there's a hardness that the word can't penetrate. Right? And what happens? The evil one takes it away. So our hearts are oftentimes these footpaths that have been trampled and hardened. And it's hard for the word of God to get through the hardness of our hearts. And so what needs to happen? Well, the first thing we need to do is build a fence around that foot part of the footpath, right? Say our heart is a footpath. We have to build a fence around it so nobody starts trampling it. We need to be able to put that fence of prayer. How many of us in our lives really have a good schedule of prayer? Right? We may say we pray when we get up in the morning, we pray in the night before we go to bed, but do we really take quiet time throughout the day to really pray? Do we schedule out like 20 minutes of our day and put it in our little agenda book and say this time is prayer, that's it? I always suggest to people, take your agenda book, I guess you do it on your phones now, on your calendar on your phone, find 20 minutes of day of every day, begin with 20 minutes and write in there, meeting with JC, Jesus Christ. And you take those 20 minutes each day for your time of prayer and that begins to create the fence around the heart that protects the heart that allows it then to begin to receive the word. Now the next part of that is going to take the shovel and do the hard work. We have to take the shovel to our hearts and turn it over. We can't be afraid to bring to God the pains, the hurts and the sufferings of our past, the sinful things we have done. We need to be able to look at that stuff, to bring it up, to turn the dirt over. It's okay. The best place to turn the dirt over is confession. The sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of confession, whatever name you want to give it, is the best place to turn over the dirt. Because there you can turn all the dirt of your heart over and it goes right to God. I just sat outside for an hour in the scorching sun waiting for someone to come to confession and nobody came. How many weeks go by? How many years have gone by? How long has it been since we actually sat before the Lord, before his representative, the person who stands in persona Christi, in that beautiful sacrament where we turn over the dirt and all that ugliness of the past comes out and disappears into the mercy of God. And we soften the heart up by getting rid of that guilt, that shame, that blame of all those sins of our past to get it out and turn it over and turn it over to the Lord. Name it, claim it, give it away. 
right? You name it. I did, 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 did. Yeah, I did it. You claim it and give it to the Lord. The Lord takes it and throws it like drops of ocean, water into the ocean. You'll never find that drop of water again. To turn over the heart so now the heart can receive the mercy of God. If we don't turn over that dirt and expose the sinfulness to God, we can't find the mercy. We won't receive the mercy. God wants to show us mercy. We're doing this to him. He's trying to show mercy. And he can't because we're holding our hands up. It's when we turn around and we take all that junk and we open up our hearts and say, here it is, Lord, here's everything. Since my last good confession, here it all is. And the Lord's like, great. He takes it and throws it into the ocean of his mercy, the abyss of his mercy, never to be found again. That's how we begin, by opening the heart to receive that word of God. And then as it begins to take root, what happens? Just like gardening, right? What happens if you find rocks in the garden? Jesus says it straight out. I wonder if he learned gardening from his mom, right? <laughs> you wonder if Mary liked to do some gardening work. That's where this parable came from. In the gardening, we find those rocks there, right? Those stones. And those stones have to come up out of our hearts. We all have stones in our hearts. Those particular sins we're particularly fond of, our little habits of sin or our big habits of sin. You know where the biggest habits of sin is? You know where it's found mostly? Scripture speaks more about this sin of this particular part of the body than any other part of the body. Can you guess? That right there, that tongue, right? We, we commit so many sins with our tongue, don't we? St. James says, St. James says, with our tongue we bless God and we curse our neighbor. <laughs> that sin of the tongue, you know, we say things and we're like, ah, I didn't mean that, and try to get the word back and you can't. Blessed Giles said we should have necks as long as cranes, so it takes a long time for the words to come out so we can think about what we're gonna say. But there are many habits of sin that we don't even think about. And there are rocks in our heart that doesn't allow the word to God to take root until we pull out those habits of sin. And we gotta do some good gardening. And that happens in the spiritual life. And when we see those things, we should not despair. We should not get angry. We should not be upset when we see those things. When we see those things in our hearts that are there that have to come out, we should say, praise God, thank you, Lord, for letting me see that. That's good. It's an act of God's love when God shows us where we need to grow. That's an act of his mercy because he's trying to purify our hearts so that our hearts can be more conformed to his, so that we can be more free to love. More free to love. More free. And then the Lord speaks about the needing to get out of these, our hearts, these cares and worries of the world, which he describes as being thorns and weeds. We have a lot of concerns, don't we? A lot of worries in this world. But how many times did our Lord tell us not to be afraid, not to be worried, not to be anxious? The one phrase that, can, that is most said in scripture by God is, do not be afraid. And yet it's the worries and the cares of the world that distract us from focusing on the goodness of God, the kindness of God, from focusing on how much God has truly blessed us in the past and wants to bless us more. It's when we come to realize the fact that God laid down his life, that we could have life and have it to the full, that frees us from the worries and the cares of this world. Why are we so anxious? Why are we so afraid? Why are we so caring about the things that anxiety and all this other stuff? Why? When we know the love of Christ. When we know the love of God when we know what we're worth to God. Why should we be so afraid about this world? And I know there's a lot of craziness in this world. I, 
Oh my goodness, I can't even look at news anymore. <laughs> I've stopped worrying about it. My prayer now is, Lord, it's your world, take care of it. <laughs> I pray, I'm not saying I don't, but I can't be anxious about it. I can't do anything other than pray penance and proclaim the gospel. The three P's I brought up this morning's mass. The three P's, proclaim, pray, and penance. That's all we can do. But each of us in our own hearts, we need to create that beautiful place of prayer in our lives. We have to give God that time. We have to unearth that stuff that's there and expose it to Christ and his mercy. We need to allow the word of God to take root and break off from those habits of sin and remove those fears and anxieties by the gift of meditating upon the passion of Christ to be able to bring forth that manifold harvest a thousandfold. We may not start off as good soil, but we certainly can end up as good soil. We're the garden, we're the gardeners. And if we need help to garden our heart, the Lord has given us his mother to help us. The Lord has given us the Holy Spirit. He's a great gardener. The Lord has given us all the saints in heaven to intercede for us so we don't have to go it alone. We don't have to go it alone. So today as we reflect upon this gospel, this parable of our Lord, we should really take it to deep prayer and set a good agenda for ourselves, set a good program for ourselves to truly become good soil, to become the kind of ground where the word of God can enter and take root and grow and produce a fruit a thousandfold. Think about it. Wouldn't it be beautiful if each and every one of us were able to produce the fullness of the, the thousandfold of the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit of kindness and gentleness, patience, self-control, modesty, chastity, charity, and all the other fruits of the Spirit I can't remember right now. Think of, is that what we want to be? A charitable person, a gentle person, a patient person, a kind person, a good person. These are all fruits of the Spirit. And they come through deeper union with God when we do the good gardening work. Our soul will produce the fruits of the Spirit a thousandfold. So today, my brothers and sisters, let's do some gardening. The gardening of the heart. The nice part about this type of gardening, you don't have to go out in the hot sun, you can do it in the air condition. Do the work here, this garden, and make it something beautiful for God. May God bless you and Mary keep you. I believe in one God. by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in our Father's love, we bring before him our needs and petitions. We pray of Holy Father, Pope Francis. The Lord may watch over him, protect him, keep him safe, that he may truly be an instrument of God's mercy in the world. We pray to the Lord. For all the souls in purgatory, that this day they might enter the beauty of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to the COVID virus, for all those who are suffering with it, that they might find healing in the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to the social strife in our country and throughout the world. We pray that there might be peace. We pray to the Lord. And for the intentions we hold in the silence of our own hearts. Father, thank you for sending us your only begotten Son. Thank you for the gift of his self-gift on the Calvary, so that we might become your adopted children. Help us to live each day in the dignity that we have received from him, through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word, and my soul shall.
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation this mystery its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. I want to try this microphone for now. Is this any better? Here in the middle of the church, this microphone better to anybody? I'm trying to figure out the mic system, so I just got the name of the pro guy to do it. So. A couple of things, I have that little question, you know, why is he doing that? That's why I'm a little headline, why is Father David doing that? You see the servers are now using the old communion patterns. And so the idea is that when the priest is giving out communion, they place it under the hand of the priest who follows, under your hands, or under your chin. Because if the Blessed Sacrament falls, it catches it, so the Blessed Sacrament doesn't hit the floor. And any particles of the Eucharist will get caught on the pattern. And you'd be surprised how many particles get caught on the pattern. Back when I was a boy and received communion, everyone came up on the tongue and you place it under their chin. And of course, my brothers would come up, my friends, and you were serving, you'd go, mm, get right in there. But don't do that, Sam. A uh, couple of announcements about the foundation of the church. I just had an evaluation done of that. I gave you the wrong numbers last week. It's actually 14,900 to fix the foundation of this church here, plus the mold issue. So we're working on that. We're going to have to look at how to do that. And then over the rectory is 9,500 to do the rectory foundation. These aren't like cosmetic things. These are necessary things. It needs to be repointed by getting mold downstairs here. I have puddles in the basement of the rectory. I said last week I'm changing my name to Noah. When you see an ark pull up and animals lining up two by two, beware. So uh, I mentioned to you last week things are going crazy in the world and that we need to pray. And so uh, I have a flyer out of the back of the sides of the pews. Please pick one up. Uh, we're having a nine-day novena in honor of St. James. We're starting on Thursday, the 16th of July, Feast of Our Lady Mount Carmel. Every night from 6 to 7, Holy Hour, Benediction, Rosary, Litany of Our Lady, Prayers to St. James. For nine days straight. I'm watching you. I hope you can come out. I'd like you to come out. We need to pray for the end of this pandemic. We need to pray for the end of civil strife. We need to pray for peace in our world. It's the only answer. I have no other answers other than prayer. Please. So every night, nine days, we're doing it in honor of St. James. It will end on the 20th. Friday, that will be our last day of the Novena. The next morning, July 25th, is the Feast of St. James the Apostle. And so we're going to have a fact, Mass at 8 a.m. Saturday morning will be our parish festive Mass of our patron St. James. So come out and pray that for the intercession of our Lady in St. James, this pandemic will end and we will have peace in our country and be restored to God. So that starts on the 16th and goes to the uh, 20, um, 24th, and then the 25th is the Feast of St. James. There's contention, in our, attention, not attention, there's a question in our parish. Are we named after St. James the Greater, the brother of John, or St. James the Lesser? Some say the Lesser, some say the Greater. We don't know. I've asked the diocese, they're looking into it, they don't know either. However, I did discover in the safe, and this I think is the telltale sign, we have a first class relic to St. James, the Greater. This one. So that tells me we're probably named after St. James the Greater, which is the feast July 25th. Either way, we're still doing his feast day, and I'll bless you with that relic on the 25th. So, those are my long announcements for the day. It's hot in here, I see you going like this, and I'm sweating bullets too. However, <laughs> I just want to say thank you again to everybody. You've been so good about so much for all of the craziness. I told you last week we got struck by lightning. $10,000 worth of work needs to be done. 
done on our log system. The insurance company, don't worry. But uh, we, we need a lot of work to be done. So just thank you to all of you for stepping up and helping out. And uh, I'm so grateful to all of you. Uh, it's such a beautiful place to be. So thank you all. And uh, particular thanks to my uh, 430 server. Faithful as can be like clockwork. And um, we've got it down pat. So thank you, Sam. You want to get to know a good person? Get to know Sam. She's a great person. So thank you all so much, and we'll see you all soon. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.